A new interpretation of 1 Timothy chapter 4, verses 1 through 5. Hmm. Let's read the scriptures from your King James Bible. It says here, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from meats, which God hath created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. For every creature of God is good, and nothing to be refused if it be received with thanksgiving, for it is sanctified by the word of God and prayer. Now, standard interpretation of that, which I have preached for many years, is it really condemns the Catholics. Why? Commanding to abstain from marriage, or there, uh, for, or excuse me, forbidding to marry, commanding to abstain from meats. The Catholic Church does both. Okay, there are certain holy days and whatever else that you are not supposed to eat meat. Um, and then, of course, they forbid to marry with the vow of celibacy, with their priests, their nuns, their monks, whatever, cardinals, bishops, and all the crazies, and the Pope, of course, leading the whole rotten mess. But um, that's a standard interpretation. Certainly it's there. Do they sear their conscience with a hot iron? Of course. Doctrines of devils? Of course. You know, they, they speak all kinds of lies and hypocrisy and things. Sure. Uh, it's a great passage to show Catholics that, hey, your system is corrupt. It's condemned right here in Scripture. But there's a little thing here that's come to light recently in my research, and I'm thinking, hmm, um, I still hold to this, these passages being there to rebuke the Roman Catholic system. But let's look at the text again. Verse 1, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly, expressly, this is very important, that in the latter times, well, um, did Roman Catholicism show up in the latter times? Were they doing things right for most centuries? No. This is a prophecy of something that would come in the future. Hmm. Some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Um, are there any seducing spirits through television? through media, they're using neuro-linguistic programming and other kinds of hypnotic types of cues and, and you get into all the subliminals and, and scripted news and everything else that we deal with now and the people that are being controlled out there. I mean, if you're saved and you just say, I don't have anything to do with television mind control. Okay, but the people that we're running into in the stores, the people that run the stores are falling forward and they're saying you have to wear a face mask for a disease that's no different than the flu. Um, you know, so it's more infectious. Okay. Uh, 90, what is, it? I don't even know what it is anymore. People say 98%, 99% now of recovery rate of the coronavirus thing. I have no idea. Let's shut down the economy. We have to, you, you, you can't come into the store unless we do all this stuff to you. Uh, but last year I could have come into the store if I had the flu. The year before that I could have come in. I could come in with a fever and, and pneumonia and whatever else, barely even be able to walk, and nobody would have said anything. Oh, I hope you feel better, you know. But now all of a sudden it's an it's a international crisis. <gasps> Why? Um, probably because of seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Hmm. It's a seducing spirit. You watch how they talk with the news media. Reports are showing that the incidence of coronavirus is going up again. Joining us now is such and such. And they, they, they do this, they'll they modulate their voice and they get all these pretty women in there to, to tell you what's going on and everything else. It's a seducing spirit. I mean, when you think of seduction, what do you think of? What's the first thing that comes to your mind? You think seduction, you think of some harlot that's trying to seduce a man. Well, why are they putting all these harlots on television? On television, get the prettiest ones that they can. They put the wet lipstick on there and stuff on their lips and things and other, you know, low-cut tops and whatever else to tell you the news, the unbiased news. We're here to tell you the unbiased news with a supermodel. <laughs> well, what? What is it? Uh, I would say it's probably a seducing spirit. You say, well, but um, could that have been there in the past? No. Walter Cronkite in the past. Old men in the past. Good evening. I'm here to tell you, you know. They weren't using attractive women in the past. You go back into the 1940s and 50s and stuff coming up in, they weren't using attractive women. What's going on? In the latter times, people depart from the faith. Some shall depart from the faith. 
giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. And, and think about it. They're departing from what? The faith. And you say, well, that's, that's Christianity, Bible-believing Christianity. Sure, but there's also, there, in Scripture, you'll have a lot of meanings. Okay, There's a lot of different things that go on with Scripture. God's Word is so deep, there's many different meanings. You'll see that a lot of times. But different ways it can be applied. Um, what is faith? The just shall live by faith. Faith is the evidence of things not seen. Can the Lord protect you from this coronavirus stuff and whatever else? See, the seducing spirits come along and get you to depart from living by faith. Another way to look at it. Interesting. Speaking lies in hypocrisy. Verse 2. In the latter times. See, if, I mean, if you just want to make this verses 1 through 5 about Roman Catholicism, well, they've been around since the 4th century. Okay, and the Roman Imperial Army long before that. Um, you know, Roman Imperial Army became the Roman Catholic Church. If you don't understand what happened there with Constantine, um, basically Christianized pagan Rome and made Roman Catholicism in the 4th century. So they've been around for a while. Okay? So if you want to make this passage about kicking the Catholics, well, you know, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, the Bible talks about all scriptures given by inspiration of God. Um, certainly it's there. You can use this to kick the Catholic system. They're guilty of celibacy and commanding to abstain from meat, having their conscience seared with a hot iron, uh, seducing spirits, doctrines of devils. They're guilty of all that stuff. But the problem is, the little key there is, in the latter times, the Catholics didn't just show up in the latter times. They've been around for a while. Hmm. Think about what's going on here. Speaking lies in hypocrisy. You don't need to wear a face mask. Face mask won't protect you from coronavirus. You need to wear a face mask. Face masks are necessary. If I had to choose between a vaccine and a face mask, Redfield said this, the Jesuit that he is, um, I would take a face mask. We all have to wear a face mask. We should have mandatory face masks. What are they doing? They're speaking lies and hypocrisy. I mean, the, the lies, the jumbled lies, I mean, it just gives you a headache after a while. What all they're saying right now in the news media, just lie upon lie upon lie. It's crazy. Having their conscience seared with a hot iron. Where's the conscience at? Hey, we're going to take the, the, the medical goons are going to come along and they're going to take a little child that's screaming and they're going to put him in this coffin looking thing and load him into the ambulance because he tested positive over in Russia. You know, oh, the little kids going into school and things, little, little adorable little girl we saw the other day driving along the road in the morning and little just cute little girl, little pigtails and everything else. She's got a face mask on. Getting in the bus. What's going on? Their conscience is seared with a hot iron. These adults that are doing this to these children. Hey, you have to do this. You have to do that. You have to do all these things. Their conscience is just gone at this point in time. But here's where it gets interesting. Verse 3, forbidding to marry. Hmm. I'm going to show you an article from the India Times. I'm going to put it up on screen here. You can look at it real quickly. Um, I'm not going to take time to read it or anything else, but it talks about these restrictions with marriage and with wedding ceremonies and things like that. Now you say, well, it's not forbidding to marry. Yeah, I get it. But you know, I'll post links, by the way, down in the description box. You can go read the article if you want to to see all the restrictions that they're doing. But I've been hearing about this for a while, not just in India, but in other countries as well where they're actually starting to put limitations on people getting married. That, you know, you can't have this many guests in and you have to social distance and I guess you can't kiss the bride or something even though after you get married, you're going to probably consummate the marriage later. And, you know, it's insane, uh, all this stuff. The doctrines of devils, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry. It's not forbidden right now. But what if it is in the future? What if they say, hey, the, the, the virus has gotten so bad. I mean, we brought out the vaccine and all of a sudden people are getting sicker and, and everybody's getting this coronavirus thing now. And we tried to vaccinate more people and more people got sick. And, and it just the coronavirus took off at the same time as us vaccinating people, like what we did with the smallpox, you know, years ago. Mandatory vaccination and all of a sudden the epidemic gets much worse. 
Hmm. Because you're putting the disease into the vaccination and injecting it into somebody's arm and then it gets into their blood and makes them sick. We won't go there. We already, I already did. <laughs> the serious sin of vaccination. If you haven't seen it, please watch that. But what if they say it's getting so bad that we're just going to have to put off marriage for a while? We need, we need, to, get, we need to get over this, this whole coronavirus pandemic. It's a pandemic forbidding to marry. Could it happen? How about the next one? And commanding to abstain, commanding to abstain from meats. I'm going to put up one here from the Independent. Top British barrister says eating meat could become illegal. And he says there, it's, it, is a, it is time for a new law on ecocide to go alongside genocide and the other crimes against humanity, says Michael Mansfield QC. Um, you know, quirky Catholic. I don't know what QC means, but, you know, what? You can't eat meat anymore? You know? Yeah. And you read down through the article. Again, you can read the article. I'm not going to put it up here, but you read down through. He's serious. This guy, whoever this nut is, you know, um, British barrister or whatever. What a crazy nut. He wants to ban meat commanding to abstain from meats. Huh. And by the way, you say, well, boy, that's going to be rough in the time of Jacob's trouble. Well, yeah, it will be. But uh, these prophecies here in 1 Timothy 4, verses 1 through 5, this is written to a Christian in the church age. We could be here long enough to see some pretty insane stuff. Okay. Um, forbidding to marry. And commanding to abstain from meats. That could be in our future. It's not going to be in my future. Uh, number one, I'm already married. And nobody's going to tell me what to do with my marriage, by the way. Secondly, I'm going to eat meat. Because I'm not going to be de dependent on the grocery store. Um, I live out in God's creation. I'll get meat. I already do. So, um, but, uh, you know, if you're in the city and things like that, boy... <laughs> You might have some rough stuff coming. Um, but just thought that was interesting as I've been studying a lot and, and just looking at things and, and uh, it, it just it's so weird to think about this, that this could actually be that the interpretation I've had for all these years is true. It definitely kicks the Catholic Church, the Catholic system of all the stuff that they do. But there could be a future fulfillment of this thing where they're actually going to have commands to abstain from meat. I know this Kamala Harris or whatever, this woman that's running as the vice presidential whatever for Biden, um, I think she's even made statements about making meat, you know, prohibiting it or lessening it or whatever else. They want to make people weak, by the way. That's what it is. You know, that's, that's the whole reason of getting rid of meat from the diet. There are some people that can do a vegetarian thing, and that's fine for them and whatever else. But there's others, like myself, uh, removing meat from my diet, I've tried it. It's horrible. I can't survive. I can't, I can't go out and split a cord of firewood or fell trees or whatever, cut timber. I can't do that without meat in my system. And like I said, I've tried it. Okay, I've tried the vegetarian thing just as a, I'll try this and see if I can do it without meat. Not happening. It's not happening. Um, so, um, yeah. And uh, yeah, I'm going to be talking about this in future videos and things, but the main reason, if you're new to this whole thing of, you know, the Bible-believing movement, the main reason that, that they didn't try this stuff in the past is because people held to a book. And I remember reading a, a quote from uh, Horace Greeley, and uh, he said the one time, it is impossible to mentally or socially enslave a Bible-reading people. Right there. This is the ultimate key to opposing tyranny. This is why our country here in America, won the Revolutionary War and why there was a lot of freedom here in this country because of a book that the people knew, even lost people said, oh yeah, that's God's book. And I knew some old timers that they, they were lost on their way to hell, cussing, drinking, fighting kind of old timers. And they knew that this was God's book. You'd hold this up and say, what is this? They'd say, well, that's, that's a good book there. They knew what it was. But then they uh, came in with their Westcott and Hort text and then they said, well, 
Actually, the King James could be better translated, and since it could be better translated, we will make a better translation with the Revised Version and the American Standard Version, and then the Revised Standard Version, and then the New American Standard Version, and then the NIV, and then the ESV, and, the, and they went and they took away your King James Bible. They took it away. And then after that, they get all these new Christians to use their new versions. All these uh, ones that you trace them, they go right back to the Vatican. This one does not. And then after that, they started to bring in the rock music into the churches and make it all about entertainment and everything else. And then they post the scriptures up on the big screens. So now, now you no longer need to have a Bible to carry. Interesting what they've done in just over 100 years. Took the Bible completely out of the hands of the people. Why? Because they want to enslave them. And to think about forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from meats. Just right on our doorstep now. Being talked about. Pretty insane. Um, we have to stand up. Say, so not taking my King James Bible. Well, we're going to pass laws to, to, for, to make it an illegal book. Pass all the laws you want. I don't care what laws are passed. I don't care if they come here and sign it into law on my front yard. You're not taking my King James Bible. We're going to send the military. We're going to send 400 troops. You're not getting my King James Bible. You'll get my dead body if you want it, but you're not getting my King James Bible, period. You want to fight tyranny? Right there. This is the key to fighting tyranny. This blessed book, this King James Bible. Well, I'm an atheist. I reject the King James. Okay, then go into tyranny. Get ready to give up your meat. Get ready to have your future, you know, oh, sorry, you can't get married and whatever else. Go ahead. Go ahead. So, please study the issue, the Bible version issue, if you don't know. Um, but uh, it's really crazy, this whole thing. Uh, I'd like to hear what your thoughts are. Leave them down in the comments section below. Thank you for watching.